Hello, welcome to Furious Driving and another episode of everyone's favourite game show, What's That Clonk? Because I'm driving Hippo, my 2003 Freelander 2 litre TD4 right now. Now when I picked this car up, do the part exchange thing with Quentin the Rover, and the uh, guy I bought it from had said that it had been fine until basically the drive down, and it's about 150 miles for each of us, and on the way down, he had started noticing a bit of a, a clonk from the front of the car, which I noticed too as I pulled away. And it has become progressively worse over the last week or so. The more I use it, the worse it seems to get. On a smooth bit of road, you'd be completely unaware of it. If you're only doing motorways and pretty nice roads, you wouldn't even know there's an issue, but you hear that right now? Um, yeah, it's becoming more and more pronounced and more and more common. So I think, so before we do much else with this car, I need to figure out what that issue is because I don't want it to turn into something serious. Hopefully, it's just going to be something minor like a drop link or a bush that we can do in the driveway and isn't going to involve taking it to a garage because they've got tools that I haven't got. So fingers crossed for an easy one. You know that's not going to happen, don't you? You do, don't you? Yeah, it's not a good noise. Right, so before I get going, I'm just going to quickly jack the wheel off the ground and make sure there's no play in the wheel itself. I mean, it has just passed an MOT test a couple of weeks ago, so it shouldn't be, but you know, it's worth a look. Oh, it's lucky I've got the high lift jack here. No, nope, sounds alright. Right, let's get this wheel off. Let's jack this underneath a chassis rail, so we've got some strength and some height. Let's just slacken off these bolts before this leaves the ground, because these are on very tight. Indeed, I've noticed. Oh, let me. This extension bar, the impact sockets, and indeed the impact driver are all available on my uh, Amazon store. So if you have a look at them, I'm loving these massive BF Goodrich tyres, they're amazing. So let's have a look under here and what we've got. Discs and pads, first of all, are really good. Lots of meat on both the pads and the discs. The car stops well, so I'd imagine that. A uh, bit of the undersill paint is flaking off under here, so that needs looking at. Shocks look tidy, nothing leaking under there. Uh, then we've got, well, see if we can find anything that moves. I have got a big wiggling stick, see if we can wiggle anything. So, tickling stick at the ready. That's all good. Uh, it's got a little bit of movement here in it, but it is, whoops, it is a crusty mess, this drop link, but that's the only thing with any kind of movement in it. Any movement there? Nope, that is rock solid. And the steering is absolutely fine. You don't really feel anything. I'm going to go soak that with the penetrating oil in case I do need to change that. And I'll pop the other wheel off and have a look at the other side. So here for comparison is the passenger side drop link, which if we give this a little bit of a wiggle, it seems a lot more, a lot more secure and less uh, willing to, to wobble around. So I'm going to go and get myself one of these in and see if I can get that for today. I'm also going to leave these plastic trim covers off as well, which sit here over the jacking point, because uh, it's kind of mucky underneath there, it's a bit of a rust trap I think, so I'm going to give this car a wash later and I'm waiting for a new spray attachment to arrive for my jet washer, so I'll give this a really good clean up and then coat it all in a bit of extra wax oil before it goes back on. Okay, oh, there, there you go, there's the, uh, the clonking I was hearing. It's that bit just there. Well, I'm back here a few minutes later and usefully my local motor parts factor JRs have one of these on the shelf, which is so handy. No waiting around, just go in there, grabbed it and got it. Right, so now I need to take the old one off and I'm not even gonna bother messing around without using my old favorite, the heat extraction uh, tool. The induction heater is the most amazing thing ever invented on the planet um, because, that's really hard to get that on there. These look like they've been on there forever and I'm not going to come off. What is kind of odd though is the bottom one is 20 millimeters on both the old 
and the new, so that won't be an issue. The top one is actually quite a tight nut fitting, uh, or sorry, nut fitting space to get a spanner into. And the old one is a 16 millimeter, which is kind of weird. And I don't have a 16 millimeter spanner I can lay my hands on. Um, the new one, 17 millimeter, common as muck, got loads of them. Uh, so not quite sure how I'll figure that one out. Might wind up cutting the thing off. Hope not. Okay, that's interesting. There's blue goo falling out of this. Which I've never had goo fall out of a, a fitting when I've been uh, working on it previously with this thing. This thing is astonishing, so I can focus all of that heat straight onto this bolt, releasing it easily without getting any damage to anything surrounding it. So the brake fittings, the uh, CV boots, all that kind of stuff is not going to be damaged. That's just getting really hot on that one particular fitting. Wow, that's virtually on fire. Well, there's actually stuff bubbling out of it. Blue goo. Let's get the socket on there while it's still boiling hot. Oh, there we go, oh, and it's off. What, as I've said previously, you must always remember not to do is once you've reached this stage and it's all lovely and soft and turning easily, it's got oh, its finger tight, I'll go in there and do it by hand because it's quite loose, because you will incinerate your fingers. That is literally dangerously hot now. Okay, right, I'll leave that on there just a touch because that will rotate against that when I try and undo it if and when I manage to find a 16 millimeter spanner because it's too big to really get, I can get a smaller socket, like a 3.8 socket in there. Trouble is I've not got a 16 millimeter 3.8 socket. I'm gonna go hunt around some more. I must have one somewhere. So I'm gonna get this good and hot and then hammer that socket on there and then go for it. And if it doesn't work, I'll have to go and get a saw and just cut that off. It's not an elegant solution, but it's what we'll have to do. Put on. Oh, that doesn't fit either. This is not a convenient place to work. Thank you, Land Rover. I'll try the flat wand. Will that fit in there? Yeah, flat wand will fit in there. Ideally, you don't want to get these wands dirty, but um, over the time I've used them, I have. Sorry. Sorry, me. The trick with these things is wait till you see a bit of smoke start coming off, then give it a couple more goes, then you get it good and good and really hot then. Mm, that's not a great fit. Okay, not brilliant. Can't actually get in there tight enough to put that on there. 9 11 is too big. What was the other one I had here? 5 16 9 16 that was it. No, 9 16 is too small. Right, well, <clears throat> funny thing, I've been battling this a bunch more and a lot of corrosion's come off it. And now it turns out 15 millimeter will go on there. It's just so corroded up. A 15 was what it was underneath the crud. But before I couldn't hammer a 15 millimeter spanner or socket on there. Don't know why, but I'm glad it fits because I've actually got one of those. Okay, that is actually sizzling around the bottom of that. So, so let's see how this looks. Oh, oh I could do with it. Some more heat on that. Oh no, I can't do anything, I'm stuck. Excellent, I love it when that happens. More heat! And normally this tool makes such short work of impossible bolts like this. But today, it feels like I'm being beaten even by this. I'm about five minutes from getting the alligator saw out. And the alligator saw is not an elegant solution. But it is a solution. Oops. Oh, it's turning. Oh, it's turning. It's no, it's just rotating on the bolt. The bolt is already mangled and it's now even more mangled. Okay. Choppy thing it is. Now, nothing really says I'm not messing around anymore like an air saw. And I'm not messing around anymore. Could you try again? Nothing, Siri, not for you. Oh, 
I'm going to need a new blade for this thing soon because it's starting to go a bit blunt. Come on. Right, <laughs> this has got the bluntest blade in history, so I'm not quite sure what blade the other one in the box is because its paint has all rubbed off completely, but it's a lot sharper. So I'm going to give that one a whirl. And that's the wrong size Allen key in the box. Excellent. There we go, one very blunt blade. Let's try this one. It looks vaguely similar. No, it's not very sharp. Let's try this one, it feels dangerous. No, it's still just turning on there. It's just a round bit of metal. It's not a nut anymore. That's interesting. I wonder if it's meant to be like a drain hole or something in there. Or not a hole at all, possibly. I don't know. Oh, I'm going to see if I can find an angle grinder. No. Not even a chance with a well ground down disc am I going to get a grinder in behind there. Not a hope. Right, I'm almost halfway through, but the blade is getting very blunt indeed, and I'm bored and it hurt my hand, so let's see if we can do a bit of undoing. No, we can't, apparently. I mean, it's now completely rounded off. I mean, it was pretty much rounded off before I even started, but it's completely rounded off now. So you can't really get a grip with any kind of socket or spanner. No, I can't even get a grip of the vice grip. Oh, come on, come on. That does not appear to be turning. I don't think that's turning. Okay, back with the uh, cutty thing again. Right, I just had a genius but stupid idea. And it's only stupid if it doesn't work, so bear with me. Um, I have not got time to go and get a fresh set of blades because I've got to go and do the school run in about 15 minutes. However, the front end of this blade, which is the only good metal blade I've got, is now just blunt. There's no tooth, no teeth left in it at all. However, the back end of the blade that goes into the tool is still quite sharp. It's never been used, obviously. So I'm putting it in the tool backwards, and I'm going to use the blade in reverse for the last few millimetres, because I'm more than halfway through the, um, the shaft of the bolt, but it just isn't coming out. So clamping this thing in as best I can, as tight as it will go, and I know this is dumb, but if it just gets me this last millimetre, then we're home free. Ow, this is actually really quite painful. Well, it's working a bit, but not brilliantly. And this thing is really, really hurting my hand now. This is, yeah, it's very, very sharp around the back corner. So when you put pressure in for a length of time, it really digs into the heel of your hand and hurts a lot. Now I've got to go into the school run anyway. So I wish I'd just gone down and get some new blades like an hour ago when I started this. Ugh. Well, so what I should have done about four hours ago was go and buy a new blade that's not completely blunt. Uh, I couldn't find one that was the same as, oops, this for my air saw, so I want to get one for this old Bosch alligator saw thing, um, which is turning out to be surprisingly good. Right now, I'm going to finally take off this bottom section. I'm trying to wrench this one out now. Let's use additional brute force to get this thing out because that's not going to come easily, I don't think. Right, as we enter day three of taking one bolt out, I've cut the bottom of the drop link off, so at least that thing is now free. However, I've still got a disc of metal underneath it that I can't do anything about, so I'm going to try and drill out. Well, my plan was to drill out from underneath, but unfortunately the brake cables are in the way, and that has caused me yet more trouble. Ah, uh. oh, how the hell am I going to get this out? 
There are some jobs you really wish you just farmed out and given to someone, but thought, it's so simple, why would I bother giving that job to a garage? It's a 20 minute job. I can have this video up by lunchtime. Yeah. Not today, folks, not today. So this is the point at which I give up for the night. If I can get a high tensile three millimeter bit that I can put in the Dremel, I can get behind the brake cable and drill up through the center of that and just basically drill the last remaining lump of collar apart and get this thing out and then I'm done. But that's not gonna to happen tonight. So I'm putting this thing away for the evening. I'll try again tomorrow. So the gator saw has done its business, so to speak, and smoothed off the bottom of what was left of the old drop link. Now, I just need to get in here and press what's left of it out. So I'm gonna use a G-clamp and a couple of sockets. Um, and hopefully that will do the trick. Using a small one that I'm hoping is smaller than what's left of the drop link on the bottom to push with. And, oops, that's gonna fall off, I'm sure. A larger one at the top. Oh, bum. This is not gonna work, is it? This is the point where you start asking the question, do you really need, do you absolutely need a drop link? Is it really essential to have one? Or can you get by without? I reckon you probably get by without. No, that's not gonna work. The other option is, of course, a whole bunch of uh, extensions for a socket and whack it, which is plan B. Oh, I can't swing it with enough force and angle to get it on there. I need another option, option three. So lots of slow but intense pressure might do the trick. Or it might just raise the suspension up. Great. That's just really heavily compressed the suspension. I think it might be popping out slowly. I think the force of the uh, the spring might actually be working it. That's gonna come out hard though, isn't it? That's gonna come out really, really hard when it finally comes out. It's coming out. Maybe if I just leave that for a few minutes, to stand well back. All right, so finally, that massive amount of pressure from behind with the spring of the car from above and the jack from underneath has got it freed. I've gone down to a, an adapter to an adapter to go to the smallest point possible and it actually wrote, seems to be drifting out at last. Here we go. Yes! Where'd it go? I've lost it. It's fallen into the car. Okay. That. That thing there. Two days, or well, virtually, of pain. Finally, it's out. You. What a relief. Now I can put the new one in. That's like five minutes' work. All right, before I go in and put everything back together. I'm just going to give this area a bit of a clean up. Some flaky stuff to get off first. I will, I've only got silver hammer right, weirdly. I'll hammer it over with silver. And then I'll put some chassis black on before. So I'll go and have a sandwich and come back and I'll underseal all that bit and chassis black that bit so it doesn't look quite so meh and it's not hopefully going to be so meh in future. Right so now finally only three weeks after starting this 20 minute job I can whack these parts back into the car and be done and call it a day and go home and get on with my life. I had a quick look online and the bottom one of these two bolts it's 55 newton meters torque for this little fella down here. 
you need really to push the anti-roll bar down hard enough to get enough angle on the drop link bottom screw. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Which is not easy. That has to be said. Ow. It's kind of slippery. There we go. And we're in. Force it down with the hammer and you're in. Phew. Let's go find me some sockets. This, by the way, is what happens when you slip with a claw hammer. It hurts, is the short answer to that. I need to put a spanner on that, idiot person. Find a spanner. This isn't very easy to see, but there is actually an Allen key socket in the top of this one, so you can hold it still while you crank it tight. Oops. Which is why you've not got a torque setting for the top one. Not the easiest place to get a spanner into. Okay, that's about as tight as I can make it. So I'm going to call it a day there. Put the wheel on and then test drive and we are done. Oh, some more bits of under sea license mesh to scratch off, so let's sort them out. Okay, now the final test is, does this thing still clonk and bang when we go over speed bumps? Let me just put this camera down here. Up the drive, let's see what happens. There we go, no clonking. much better. I think I'm going to call that fixed. Right, back to the drive. So there we go, that 15 minute two bolt job only took two days, but it's done now, so I'm going to call that a win. And this Freelander, which is meant to be trouble free, no jobs needed, just get in and drive and do some adventures, is of course, well, it's a Freelander, so we found we have got a number of issues which we're going to be addressing, and that was the first one. So if you've enjoyed this content, please, as always, do hit like and subscribe, and join me again next time when we do, I don't know what, something else on a different car probably. I'll do the Crown Victoria some more. That'll be fun. Thanks for watching.